Hey, what's up guys? Neat J here. Welcome to my video. Today I will show you how to make this logo burning simulation. Let's get started. Import the Illustrator file of the logo spline. I'm going to use Loft to shape the logo plane first. Remesh the plane. Change the polygon target mode to polygon count. The default polygon count is set to 2000. I think that's enough. Right click and select connect object and delete to make it editable. In polygon mode, select all polygons and press MT to extrude them. In edge mode, press UV and select all side edges. Then press MF to use the edge cut. Left click three times on the edges to subdivide them. In polygon mode, click the set vertex weight button. If you don't know where the tool is, you can find it in the select menu. Or you can always press shift C to open the commander to find what you need. In the vertex map tag, Check the Use Field box. Create a box field. Resize the box to just cover the size of the logo. And increase the remapping inner offset. Place the box under the logo model. Add Freeze and change the layer mode to Grow. Move the box closer to the bottom of the logo. Change the freeze blending mode to add. Play the animation. It doesn't work. Move the box field closer again. We can see that the vertex map grows immediately. I want to make it slower. Reduce the strength of the effect to 10%. Check again. It's still too fast. Maybe reduce the radius to 8 centimeters. Now let's create a shader field for the freeze. Add a noise effect to the shader. Change the noise type to test the result. Play again. The growth speed is still fast. Just tweak the effect strength and radius to get better results. Now let's set a new vertex weight. Rename these vertex maps to avoid confusion. Drag the first grow vertex map into the second vertex map field. Add a delay modifier to this field. Play the animation to check it out. Before we continue, let's edit the UV map first. Then I'll quickly set up a basic environment for this scene. As this part is not the tutorial about, I'll just speed up the process. Now let's create a compositing material. To create a compositing of burning before and after. Burning before is metal and after is kind of carbon. For this tutorial, I will just use GSG library materials to quickly create the compositing material. Now create a compositing material. Open the node editor. Create a submaterial node. In the Material 2 mask, create a vertex map node. Drag in the Grow Vertex Map.
Now, copy the aluminum material node into the compositing material node editor. Change the submaterial type to universal. Connect all the aluminum nodes to material 1. And use the roughness and normal map for material 2. Copy and paste the color and displacement map of the carbon material into material 2. Now let's check the material in the render viewer. Adjust the UV transform scales to get better results. Add the texture emission to material 2. Use the delay vertex map which we created earlier for the emission texture. Add a gradient node and edit the gradient to get the burning effect. Add the RGB spectrum to the distribution and change the color. Decrease the emission power. Add a color correction to the carbon texture. Change the gamma value to make the color a little bit lighter. Adjust the delay strength. It's still not what I want. Maybe change the environment power, reduce it to two, open the material node editor, add a gradient to the vertex map of the material two mask. Adjust the gradient to make the burning part sharp. Now, let's add some lights to the object. As this part is not the tutorial about, I'll just speed up the process. Add a pyro emitter tag to the object. Let's create a new vertex map. Drag the delay vertex map into the new pyro vertex map field. Drag the vertex map onto the pyro density and emission map. Let's check the simulation. The smoke was too thick at the beginning and end. Let's keyframe the thickness to make a change. Now let's add a box field. Resize the box to just cover the size of the logo and increase the remapping inner offset. Change the blending mode to subtract. Place the box under the logo object 
and keyframe the y-axis to make the subtract field follow the grow movement. Check the simulation again. Let's add a destructor force to destroy the smoke out of frame. Press Ctrl or Command D to open the project settings. In the simulation tag, I increase the relative density dissipation value to reduce the smoke at frame 36 and keyframe it. Change the voxel size to 1 cm to get more detail on the smoke. Then play the animation. We can clearly see the fire throughout the middle of the burning process. The smoke is only concentrated at the beginning and the end. In the Pyro Vertex map, add a random field and also change the blending mode to subtract. Check the simulation. The fire now looks more natural. Press Ctrl or Command D to open the project settings and click Create Output Object. Add an Octane Object tag to the Output Object. Check the render viewer. We can barely see the fire and smoke. We need some setup. Before we continue, let's change the camera focal length to 100 millimeters and adjust the camera position. Set the opacity of each area light to zero. After all these adjustments, go to the Octane Object tag. In the Particle Rendering, click on the Standard Volume button to open the Volume Medium shader. Change the density to 600. Now we can clearly see the volume of the fog shape. Change Volume Step Length to 0.2 to get a more detailed result. Change the black body intensity to 500. Now we can see the red hot fires. The rendering is too slow. I'll temporarily change the parameters to make the rendering a bit faster. The fire is still not hot enough. Change the black body intensity to 1000. I think maybe the random field is making the fire area so small. Let's reduce the opacity of the random field. Re-simulate to check the result. Yes, that's what I want. Just keyframe the black body intensity. 500 at the beginning and the end, 1000 in the middle. Replay the animation and check the rendering every few frames. Here we can see the smoke is very dark. We can adjust the transparent weight color 
and the scatter color to make it brighter. Simulate again. The logo is a little bit bright. Adjust the light power. Change the voxel size to 0 0.5 and check again. I don't want to make this tutorial too long, but we can always tweak all these parameters to get more detailed results. That's all for today's tutorial. If my video helps you in any way, feel free to subscribe, comment, or share. I'll see you in the next video.